Broadway cigarette program starring Red Skelton, Dave Rose and his orchestra, our singing star Anita Ellis, Verna Felton, Lorene Tuttle, Pat McGeehan, and yours truly, Rod O'Connor. <laughs> From Metro Golden Mayor, we present the star of the Rolly Cigarette Program, Red Skelton. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, you, Rod. Hi, Red. Say, this is National Newsboy Week, and we have as honored guest tonight newsboys representing the 32 papers in this district. That's right. These fellows here tonight competed in a contest to see who rated the highest average in sales, and the boys with the highest mark got a special prize. And these newsboys got to come to the Red Skelton broadcast. No, they got the booby prize. <laughs> You know, being a newsboy is a great profession, Red. Many of our national figures got their start that way. Yeah, I'll never forget my corner. He used to stand here, extra, extra. He always yelled, extra, extra. Of course, I charged six cents for a paper. You know. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I had a racket selling uh-huh. papers. I used to stand on the corner and yell, read all about it. 29 people swindled, read all about it. Guy would buy a paper and he'd read it and he'd look through it and he'd say, I don't see anything about 29 people swindled. I said, I know. <laughs> read all about it. 30 people swindled. <laughs> I'm making notes down there. <laughs> you know, I had a paper out when I was a kid. Yeah, me too, you know. Oh, many's the time I couldn't deliver the paper, mm-hmm. and my mother would uh, deliver it for me, you know. That's where they got the old saying, does your mother know your route? <laughs> <laughs> Proud of that. That ain't in here. <laughs> well, anyhow, mother would get on my bicycle, and uh, uh, mother would get on the bicycle, and um, well, go ahead. Well, I'm lost, and I can't remember the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she couldn't write it anyhow. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, the newsboys certainly render a great service to our nation. You said it. If it weren't for the, uh, that morning paper delivered, why, this country's uh, divorce rate would double. Well, how do you figure? Well, a fella uh, gets up in the morning, he's got his paper there at the breakfast table. If Without it, he'd just have to sit there and look at his wife. <laughs> <laughs> and the way some of the women look at the, look at the breakfast table, I tell you, well, it's ABC. Figure it out for yourself. <laughs> Well, all kidding aside, I think any boy who delivers a newspaper realizes the true meaning of freedom. You said it, brother, and Winchell didn't do bad with it the other night, either. <laughs> you know, a free opinion is really a wonderful thing. For example, uh, e- uh, this morning, I read each of the 32 newspapers and the, uh, that these young men represent, and, they, and the, each paper agreed on one thing. What was that, Red? Today is September the 30th. <laughs> And now, Anita Ellis, what are you going to sing, honey? Body and Soul. <laughs> My heart is sad and lonely For you I sigh for you My days in longing and wondering why it's me or wrong. I tell you, I mean it. I'm all for you, body and soul. I can't believe it. It's That you turn away romance Are you pretending it looks like the ending Unless I could have one more chance To prove you My life a wreck Bye. 
Thank you very much, Anita. That was really wonderful. And now, ladies and gentlemen, so I can pay Ben Rubin, the grocer, tomorrow, will you listen for just a couple of seconds, please? <laughs> listen. <laughs> that sound of fresh, pure moisture stands for the new, all-new Raleigh 903 cigarette. <laughs> it's moisturized to cut down throat irritants. Yes, it's moisturized to cut down those throat-irritating tars present in all fine tobaccos. That's why a jury of 14 distinguished doctors agrees no other leading cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat irritants than the new, richer, yet milder Raleigh 903. Yes, Raleigh 903 is moisturized by the revolutionary new 903 process to cut down throat irritants. That's why Raleigh 903 brings you rich, full flavor, yet is milder to smoke. Smokers follow the lead of lovely Linda Darnell, starring in Forever Amber, a 20th Century Fox Technicolor production. Miss Darnell says, quote, I chose Raleigh 903 because it's moisturized to cut down throat irritants. Raleigh 903 is richer, better tasting, yet it's smoother, milder too, unquote. You'll agree with Linda Darnell when you smoke the new Raleigh 903. Remember, <laughs> It's moisturized to cut down throat irritants. The Skelton Scrapbook of Satire, Volume 3. You can take five. I think they're awake again now. <laughs> and now, Chapter 3 of Radio's first nighttime serial, uh, The Life of a Fireman. This one's entitled Fire Prevention. Guy Lombardi. <laughs> yes, sir, boy, here I am, nature's gift to mankind. <laughs> Only thing, they ain't take the wrappings off yet. <laughs> well, sure, here it is, the last day of September, and tomorrow will be the first of October. <laughs> That's quite a coinkadinky. <laughs> I remember the same thing happened last year. <laughs> Yeah, what do you want, Ma? Well, come here. I don't want the whole neighborhood to know our business. No. <laughs> come in, Mater. <laughs> what do you want, Ma? Clem, did you go down and see about that dog catcher's job? <laughs> I sure did. Well, what happened? They locked me up with a mongrel. <laughs> Clem, how stupid can you get? Well, I don't know. I ain't really put my mind to it yet. <laughs> what do you want to see me about, Mother? Well, look it. A man was here. <laughs> Listen, Clem. Yeah? A man was here from the fire department yesterday. <laughs> he says this house is a fire hazard and all the trash has got to go. <laughs> <laughs> he said all the trash has to go? Yes. Yeah. Does that mean that Pater will be leaving? Well, he said slums was caused by laziness. Yeah, well, of all the insulting things. That's just what I told him. I ain't been so insulted since the day you was born. Oh, boy, I'll bet that made him mad. It didn't show if it did. 
I also told him that it's not my fault we live in such a rubbish heap. It's because I've got such a lazy, no good, stupid son. Oh, you didn't tell him that. I most certainly did. You might give the folks the wrong impression of me, you know. They might think you're kidding and you're not. Well, help me clean up a little around here. Okay, I'll start by picking up this bit of string here on the ground. Mm. Mm. It's resisting me. Clem, that string is your own shoelace. <laughs> Must be a rabbling from my long underwear Cause I ain't wearing any shoes <laughs> Hey, look, here comes a red automobile Well, how gaudy can people get anyhow? <laughs> oh, that's a fire truck well, That's what they use to go to blazes hmm? <laughs> It's hmm? used to go to blazes Go to blazes it's a fine way for a mother to talk to her son. <laughs> I figured I could make something out of that. <laughs> Howdy doody. Howdy. Are you Mr. Fiddle Chopper? The name ain't Fiddle Chopper, it's Cadiddle Hopper. How do you spell Cadiddle Hopper? Hmm? How do you spell Cadiddle Hopper? Say, Fiddle Chopper ain't a bad name at that, is it? Call me Smitty if you want to, you know. Uh, what do you want, neighbor? Well, I'm here to give you a final warning about these fire hazards. Yeah? There's really no excuse for it except plain laziness and carelessness. Now, you aren't lazy. You want to bet? <laughs> Don't be too sure. This just happens to be my day to stand up. <laughs> You know, Clem, if I didn't see you, I, I wouldn't believe you. Well, I've looked in the mirror and I ain't convinced myself. <laughs> Look, Clem, I'm going to leave this pamphlet about fire prevention with oh. you, and I want you to digest every word of it. Well, I'll try. Food so high, I'll eat anything now. <laughs> I want you to read it. Maybe it'll smarten you up on fire prevention. Me read this uh, pamphlet here? That's right. You want me to read it, huh? That's right. You sure you got the right house? <laughs> Look, I, I know how to take precautions. When I build a fire in a fireplace, I always put newspapers down to keep the sparks from going on the rug. <laughs> yes, sir, boy. And I never throw a lighted cigarette away. I swallow it. Doesn't that make you awfully sick? It helps. <laughs> You have your incinerator a safe distance from the house. Well, of course. You think I'm stupid? You don't have an insinuator right up here with a house. You got it out there next to the garage, see? Yeah? Yes, the garage. Yeah. Well, don't burn anything in the incinerator until you move it away from the garage. Well, I already burned some stuff this morning, some incidentals like kerosene rags and small twenty-two caliber bullets we ain't using. Them. Good heavens. What happened? Hmm? What happened? How oh, should I know? I've been too busy building a new garage. <laughs> Clem, yeah. uh, what's in those cans over there? Well, one of them cans has got kerosene in it, and the other one's got gasoline in it for the tractor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you know which is which? Well, it's very simple. I just pour one of them into the tractor, and, and, the, and then I take a swig out of the other one. And if the tractor don't go, boy, you ought to see me plow up that 40 acres. Oh, uh, Mrs. Cadiddlehopper, what kind of a stove do you cook on? Well, we've got a gas stove, but it's not too good. <laughs> Every time I cook on it, the flames shoot out and send some of my hair off. Yeah, about three more pork chops, and we're going to start calling her Mount Baldy. That's <laughs> too fast for a mole. He didn't get it. <laughs> the gas was leaking awful bad, but my boy Clem fixed that. Yep, I fixed it. There's not a sign of gas now. How'd you do it? Didn't pay the bill. 
Well, uh, as a public servant, I want to give you a little advice. Oh? You should check everything that endangers your life as well as community property. Oh? And above all, clean up the trash in this yard. Mm. It only takes a few minutes to be neat. Well, you know, now that makes sense. There's no sense to be for slums and stuff like that. And I'm one of the guys that's causing it. I'll have this stuff cleaned up in no time. Oh, thanks, Clem. Your neighbors will appreciate it, too. Uh Oh, uh... Clem, if you're going to burn anything in the yard, no matter what it is, be sure and connect up your garden hose. Or have a bucket of water handy, just in case. Okie K, okie K. Well, now to clean up around here. Oh, this is the way we sweep the yard, sweep the yard, sweep the yard. Well, it's... What's the worst piece of rubbish laying around here? Well, let's see. I'll have to forget that. I won't fit in that insinuator. <laughs> Incinerator. Boy, you give them writers a raise, and they'll buy a dictionary every time. <laughs> well, I'll just start here by tearing down this old awning. I'll just rip it down. You know? Well, now, I don't know whether that was my overhauls or the awning. <laughs> Well, either way, it got kind of cooler all of a sudden. Listen. That sound of fresh, pure moisture stands for the new, all new, Raleigh 903 cigarette. It's moisturized to cut down throat irritants. Yes, it's moisturized to cut down those throat-irritating tars present in all fine tobaccos. That's why a jury of 14 distinguished doctors agrees no other leading cigarette gives you less throat irritants than the new, richer, yet milder Raleigh 903. Yes, this new Raleigh 903 is moisturized by the revolutionary new 903 process to cut down throat irritants. That's why Raleigh 903 brings you rich, full flavor, yet it's milder to smoke. Get the new Raleigh 903. You'll see the number 903 on the package. Remember, (whistles) it's moisturized to cut down throat irritants. So smoke the new, richer, yet milder Raleigh 903. And now Dave Rose and his orchestra play his arrangement of humoresque from the motion picture Joan Crawford.
Chapter three in the scrapbook is entitled The Babysitter. <laughs> Topsy Turvy Tone! <laughs> Mummy! Namor! Are you here? <laughs> Yoo hoo! You stinker tone! <laughs> well, here I is all alone! <laughs> we know what that means, don't we? <laughs> well, oh, look, the telephone, the telephone. Mummy and Namor says not to talk on it, you know. But how would they know? <laughs> maybe they has the wires tapped. Hmm? <laughs> then again, maybe they don't have them. Then again, maybe they don't. Then again, I don't know why I'm so concerned about it. I'm going to do it anyhow. You know. <laughs> oh, boy, I wonder who I'll trap this time. I think I'll call up the Hollywood Bowl and ask them if they need any pin boys over there. <laughs> you, sir. We can... Whoa! Inner's the heavy. So, you've been talking on that telephone again. Well, what makes you think I had? What's that you're holding in your hand? Me bubble gun. The other hand. Well, what do you know the telephone? <laughs> now, who stuck that thing in me hand when I wasn't listening? Well, you come into my room where I can keep an eye on you. Okay. Oh, boy, you should have been with me. I was down the street and I was playing yes, down there and Skid fell in the mud puddle. Of course, I helped him alone. Here now, here now, sit down. <laughs> Just sit down while I put my makeup on. Okay. You know, I like to watch you get yourself all pretty. Do you What are you putting that grease on your face for? Does it squeak? <laughs> I'm cleaning my face with cold cream. Well, why don't you wash it? <laughs> I do wash, but this keeps the wrinkles away. That's just supposed to keep the wrinkles away? Yes. I got news for you, kiddo. <laughs> You had better go down to the corner store and get W money back. Well, anyway, it keeps the crow's feet away from my eyes. Yeah, it might keep the crow's feet away from your eyes, but it don't do much for that pelican's beak under your chin. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, you're now, going now, to get it. Don't you touch me. Don't you hit me. You lay a mid on me, I tell. You tell what? Oh, oh I know all about you, kiddo. <laughs> you just as much as... Touch me with your little pinky, that's all. <laughs> Just go ahead. Boy, I will tell on you. I tell everybody that you used to be the sword swallower with a sideshow. Why, I was no such thing. Oh, no. no. <clears throat> hey, Vernie, you want another sword? No, give me a table knife. I'm on a diet. <laughs> On you. Yeah, you'll have to crawl under the bed to get me, though. <laughs> hey, no, you won't tell her either, because you're too sweet for that. You're too kind, because you know she gets me a spanking, and you're just a sweet old orchid gatherer. You wouldn't do the thing like that. Oh, well, then, just behave. Okay. <laughs> they sure fall for that muffled duffel, don't they? <laughs> hey, what you getting all dressed up for? Where are you going? To a gin rummy party with your mother, and I dread it. Well, if you don't want to go, why don't you let Grandpa go? Oh, he can't play gin. Well, let him take it some other way. <laughs> Who's going to take care of me? The babysitter. You mean that big fat girl that lives in our icebox? <laughs> Boy, what a wacket she's got. All she does for 50 cents an hour is to put me to bed and then go down and raid the icebox, you know. And she sits around reading them mushy love stories all the time. Don't bring good literature, you know, like Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers and such like that. The mushy love stories she brings. And then and once in a while she gets to reading real interested like that and she jumps up in the air and screams, you know. Well, what does she scream about? The hot food I give her. <laughs> She put you to bed. Yeah, so did she. <laughs> hey, why don't you stay with me, Namor? I don't like her. I, I only like her just half. And the half I like her and half I don't. But the half I don't is bigger than the half I does. Well, I'd love to, dear, but there's no way out of it. Oh, you just mean you don't love me no more, no, that's I, all. I do love you, Junior. Why, you're my whole life. Yeah, then why are you always saying you'll be the death of me yet? Yeah. <laughs> I know your type. You're just fickle, that's all, you know. I, I know the way you feel about me, okay. You go your way, and I'll go my way. And I'll get in trouble before you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you stop acting so silly. Yeah, take me with you, will no, you? No, I can't. You're too little to stay up late. Well, you can tell everybody I was a midget. Tell them I was your husband. Tell them I took a bath in alum and I shrunk. <laughs> 
No, they'd never believe you. No, well, maybe I could shave and grow a mustache or something. Oh, you're too young to have a mustache. Oh, I don't know. I got a little fuzz on me lip now. What? Yes. Let's see. Oh, Junior, you do have fuzz on your lip. Oh, hmm? what's your mother going to do? Oh, probably hide the peaches where I can't reach them. <laughs> Oh, yes, Mummy doll. Oh, you look so pretty today. Oh, do you really think I'm pretty, dear? Yes, I does. I love your long golden hair and the short black roots. <laughs> oh, Mummy. Why, hey, Mummy, can Nemo stay home with me tonight? She no, dear. Me to... No, the babysitter is coming. Well, you better tell her to stop sitting on this baby or she's going to get stuck with a pin. <laughs> and Junior, while we're on the subject, I want you to be nicer to her when she's here. Uh, Last time, you pulled her hair. Well, how'd I know it was going to come off? <laughs> Goodness, you, you know, I, I is nice. I always remove my hat before I bite that babysitter. I had to push it gently. Oh, gentleman. Junior, you must be good now. Uh, and another thing, before you go to sleep, don't forget to say your prayers. I'll say them. Did you say your prayers last night? Yes, ma'am. I didn't hear you. I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> Start talking stupid. Well, now, I is not stupid. I is smart. You just ask me a question. All right. If there were four pieces of cake in the cupboard and you ate yeah. one, what mm -hmm. would you have? A spanking. <gasps> that proves you're stupid. The answer is not a spanking. It isn't. Well, that was the answer yesterday afternoon, Kato. <laughs> Oh, look at him, look at him. Junior, look at him. come away from that fishbowl. You know, I can't figure it out. Them fish stay down that water all day long and they never drown. Fish do fine underwater. They yeah. breathe it through their gills. Through their gills? Screen actors? <laughs> hey, I want a pair of gills <laughs> I want a pair of gills so I can breathe underwater, oh, too Oh, Junior, now don't be silly No, I want a pair of gills I want a pair of gills oh. Well, at least I got something anyhow <laughs> Look at that silly fish And mm. stop making faces at the goldfish They started it <laughs> It's no wonder we can't keep a babysitter Well, I don't care I'd rather stay by myself anyhow Give me the 50 cents you folks don't love me anymore anyhow. I could just stay here and, and, and play with the matches and burn the house down. I could barbecue myself. That's what I could do. Hot Dog Junior, they would call me. You know. And I would get myself all barbecued and I'd crawl inside a loaf of bread and sprinkle myself with mustard. And, oh, no, no, no. What's the matter? I scared me down. Poor oh, baby. Yes, poor baby. Bless his little heart. Yeah, bless his little heart. <laughs> I don't like that baby Stella because she don't like me. Then you'll have to try to make her like you. Now, here's you. what I want you to do, Jim. What? You were bad the last time she was here. Yeah. So when she gets here tonight, yeah. I want you to kiss her and tell her you're sorry. Well, I will not do it. <laughs> I will not kiss her. I know she's pretty, but I don't want to kiss her. Why? Well, because... Come outside. Now, I tell you, I don't, want, I don't want your mother to hear this. She's at the age where she picks things up. We'll be right back now. Now, what's she up to? <laughs> Oh, Mother, would you mind taking care of Junior? You're not going to the party tonight. I'd love to take care yes. of him. Where's the phone? Here it is. How come it's off the hook? I had it ready for you an hour ago. Oh, well, hello? Operator, why doesn't she answer? Well, you're talking in the ear part. You're oh. talking in the ear part. Operator, <laughs> operator, 4936. I'm sorry you had to give up your evening there, Mother. It's a pleasure, yes, dear. I know. Hello? Agnes, you don't have to bother coming over to take care of Junior tonight. Goodbye. <laughs> it worked, it worked, it worked. Well, it worked. what on earth did you tell her? Well, when she said I had to kiss the babysitter, mm -hmm. I said to her, I'm not going to kiss her because she might slap me the way she did Pop. Oh, Junior. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> You're kidding. Oh, you keep laughing. <laughs> you better have Pop to do the same thing, too. That's all. Sir Walter Raleigh, the pipe tobacco that rates superior on all five counts. Check them. A rich, ripe. Full-bodied Burley Blend. Sir Walter Raleigh, pipe tobacco. Mellowed with rum for extra smoothness. Deep down, satisfying goodness. That's Sir Walter Raleigh, pipe tobacco. Clean smoking all the way down. No soggy heel. Leaves only a clean, dry air. And that's Sir Walter Raleigh, pipe tobacco. Crip cut for slow, even, cool burning. Yes, yeah, Sir Walter Raleigh, pipe tobacco. The brand of grand aroma. Keeps home sweet home. It's Sir Walter Raleigh. Sooner or later, your favorite tobacco. Yes, a favorite with college men. Men, servicemen, businessmen. Men everywhere who know and appreciate quality pipe smoking. Smoke Sir Walter Raleigh, the quality pipe tobacco of America. This is Ed Steve, the National 
podcast.